Hello YouTube, welcome to Paleo News. Today is Sunday the 5th of September 2010 and because I was on work experience this week we're going to have, be having a look at three stories from the past two and a half weeks and as you may have seen from my last video I am very sorry for the delay but I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you very much. Okay, our first story today comes from Edmonton in Canada and just goes to show that you can find fossils absolutely everywhere and you don't have to be on a World Heritage Site to do it. Um, what's happened is uh, two city workers working in the sewers of the city or town have found dinosaur bones, uh, including the tooth of a Tyrannosaurid dinosaur, possibly an Albertosaurus, and also uh, the limb bones or limb bone of uh, species of the genus Edmontosaurus, which is a duck-billed dinosaur um, from the Cretaceous. So, uh, just a little interesting story there, just to goes to show that, as I said, you don't have to be in a World Heritage Site or in a famous fossil area to find fossils. Although it is humorous, shall we say, that they found an Edmontosaurus in Edmonton. Our second story today is also one that hails from Canada, from British Columbia, and a place called the Kootenay National Park. Um, and it is the announcement of a new fossil field, very similar to one 40 kilometres away called the Burgess Shale, which you will almost certainly have heard of, even if just in the popular literature. Um, and it's a soft preservation site. And these fossil, the fossils that were found here were first discovered by hikers in the uh, 1990s. Um, and paleontologists who have been studying them have finally published um, information about them in the scientific journal. That's the uh, Journal of Geology, which I will link to below. Um, this paleo environment, i.e. the environment that has now been fossilised, was, was considered to be barren, i.e. no fossils. Uh, because unlike the Burgess Shale, there was no protecting geolo geology to stop crushing and uh, diagenesis from occurring within this uh, formation. However, it's, they've now found fossils. Uh, they collected approximately 2,000 spe uh, specimens. And from those 2,000 specimens, they have described so far eight new species of animal from the time which I should say is uh, the Cambrian 505 million years ago so pretty early on in the fossil record anyway because this paleo environment had been considered barren and now it has been shown not to be uh, it opens up the possibility of many many more sites around the area in the same formation and others similar to it which have not been looked at for fossils and for paleo environment before because they were considered to be geology that wouldn't fossilise. So now we have the possibility of many more sites opening up in British Columbia where we're going to find hopefully fantastic new fossils from these early times in the, well, early times in the existence of uh, multicellular, multicellular animals on Earth. And it's really exciting. The third and final story that I'm going to cover today is a very interesting one, actually. Um, about a month ago, we covered the Triceratops torosaur con controversy, where it was found that, in fact, they were one species at different, age, uh, different ages in their life. Um, now there's been a new major shift in the understanding of a single group of fossils. Um, these are the Mosasaurs, which you may or may not be aware of. They are a form of marine reptile, much like ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and so on, um, which had previously been considered to be very crocodilian in their morphologies. Um, however, there's a paper has been published in PLOS, that's the Public Library of Science, I think it's PLOS One, their journal, uh, which describes a mosasaur from Kansas, which shows um, a bending down at the tail end of the organism's spinal column, which if you're familiar with ichthyosaurs um, is indicative of the animal having a tail fluke and as such um, the historic practice, shall we say, of um, 
straightening the tails of mosasaurs, uh, which was even done by famous uh, famous individuals, including Richard Owen, um, was wrong. And in fact, mosasaurs, at least in the latter stages of their evolution, became very, very streamlined, very ichthyosaurian, if you will, in their body shape. And once again, this just goes to show that science, in all its forms, is willing to revise its ideas when new evidence comes up, which is fantastic. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, everything that I've talked about, I'll link to the articles that I got them from, and if I can, scientific papers below. And I hope you have enjoyed the show. And once again, sorry for it being half a week late. Thank you very much.